I kept writing overstatement of VIX and understatement of VIX. And I said, that's too many characters for Twitter. So I'm just going to do over VIX. <laughs> I love it. Over VIX. Turn into, turn into a verb too. <laughs> Things are over VIXing. <laughs> I love it. Oh, well, what does it, what does it mean exactly? How, how can a, a viewer so, make um, sense out of it? Basically VIX and SPX have a very uh, strong negative correlation. And mm -hmm. if you plot the percentage change of SPX and the VIX, which already is a percentage, the annualized percentage of VIX, the change in points of VIX per day, uh, you get a very tight VIX SPX correlation uh, that has like an R squared of 63. Mm -hmm. It's been like that since 2004. Um, the, the equation doesn't change very much. And the causation of this of this correlation is this is the sweet spot for market maker risk mm -hmm. and this is where they like to hold the, this is the liquidity they like to hold that in this kind of range mm -hmm. um, however sometimes in big market drops you see that vix goes way higher than that regression mm -hmm. um and my personal like uh my personal trade plan regarding that is if we go 2.5 VIX points higher than that regression formula, then you buy the dip because that means a lot of people are hedging and that creates support for market makers to, uh, for, Vol for Vanna to take a effect and push the markets back to equilibrium and mm -hmm. pushing in that case would be going up. However, if you're under VIX without that over VIX prior, then there's a vacuum underneath you. And that's where we're at today. There's a vacuum underneath the market. There's not enough hedging and it gives the market opportunity to go down if it, if it wants to, or if it can, or if people want to sell. And that's what we've been doing for the past couple of weeks. And uh, as Mark said, my Twitter feed, I've been doing these kind of bold calls um, where I've, you know, made somewhat, you know, 30 point predictions by the end of the day that I've, uh, the last three days I've had good ones because of short-term gamma and vanna uh, scenarios. Okay. So in this, I can't remember if it's under VIX or over VIX, correct me where I'm wrong here. So let's say under VIX, is it sort of like there's these vacuums and these, these black holes that exist underneath the market? Yes. And, I mean, and I basically what, yeah. Essentially what happens is that if there is a lot of put buying, Mm -hmm. that actually creates support for the market not it doesn't foretell doom and mm -hmm. what that what it does is there's a lot of premium and the iv goes up in spx is what i'm talking about now but really in any equity mm -hmm. the iv increases and it gets to a point where um market makers are very short puts and as implied volatility comes down and these the hedge is not realized, then they have to buy in order to cover that hedged position. While they are hedging, they have to sell. But because there's a premium involved, yep. they buy higher than the original point where we were over VIXed. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I okay. think so. so. Greater demand for options, greater demand for downside options, more put buying is going to raise the level of the VIX. And if it right. raises the level of the VIX, calculation higher than what the drawdown in the market was, that's going to create a scenario where you expect that implied volatility to revert and create that Vanna effect where the market makers had sold all of these deltas down. And now all of a sudden they're much less short deltas than they had on the way in. And now they need to buy those back to cover. Exactly. Well, it gives it's stability, exactly right? right? When they have to buy back to cover, it gives stability to that downside market, right? Yep. So, yep. Well, we saw that mark, I think, in the in the floor days. So we didn't know we didn't have this analysis. It was just, you know, one of these. Put your finger up there and start buying. Um, but we, I think, I think we saw a good bit of that in these these market thrashes. Oh yeah, yeah. you I mean, always sort of see that like exuberance and demand for when there there's blood on the screens, the people start going crazy and yeah. you know overpaying for stuff, and like that dynamic plays out exactly in Jason's analysis. I think. Yeah. Good. Right. I love it. And, it, you know, the other thing, too, I wanted to, to stress a little bit is, you know, historically, you know, there have been academic papers that have 
describe the short-term options class as very high in premium burn, you know, obviously because it's shorter term. So the time effect has a, has a uh, shorter impact. Uh -huh. And, you know, I think it was August, 2016, the CBOE started offering Monday and Wednesday expiring options in SPX and SPY. Uh -huh. And traditionally those short-term options uh, were had too high of an IV, so they were sold. Um, but that attracted a lot of uh, option writers when they were zero or one day until expiration, since now there's more of these. Uh -huh. And IVs in the short-term option class declined precipitously, as they should. And so volumes in these options became very high. I mean, and last Friday, we were looking at four times the open interest uh -huh. in volume of zero day to expiration options. And all of this new volume has been causing some wild short-term swings at times subject to the underlying environment of the longer term options. Mm -hmm. They've been hedged with longer term options as well as the underlying and creating a buffer for very large moves. So you're not seeing these, you know, 10% moves down, but it's still creating some short term volatility that's kind of sandwiched in this in this range. So when we get when we get close to a majority of the volume in the short term, like these mm -hmm. zero day to expiration, Mm -hmm. we what happens is some kind of like gamma roll where people roll those options down and that assists the marketing continuation of going down and sometimes at the end of the day you know last 15 minutes you see these wild swings that are exasperated by these gamma rolling and these market makers having to hedge these zero day to expiration moves yeah so um, what, what do you say gamma, sorry jason when you say gamma rolling then so some of this stuff that the market maker sold out of the money ish kind of kind of items all of a sudden becomes at the money, maybe in the money. And our mm -hmm. friends in the retail space or who owns the other side starts rolling that from in the money at the money down. Mr. Market yep. maker says, OK, good. I'm taking care of my at the money stuff. And now I've got some new out of the money shorts that I've got to deal with. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And okay. really what the what the other side is trying to capture is the gamma trying to go down. Mm -hmm. um, the first time I really noticed it was that GameStop meme stock thing about a year ago. Yep. Um, the Tesla moves in the middle of last year when it went from 900 to 1100. Um, and we've seen it in SPX now for the past four months. Um, so if you remember, there was market volatility in the beginning of December that created a large mm -hmm. January option kind of buffer. Right. Um, because they were being hedged then. And when option expiration happened in December, you saw a three point difference between the front VX future mm -hmm. and spot VIX. And mm -hmm. this is and this is why. So mm -hmm. really, and there's and it's been even stronger contango in the in the longer term months. So right. as a result, and going into January option expiration, I expect stronger intraday whipsaw, um, hopefully with like a culminating drop. Uh, mm -hmm. maybe this week or next uh, that has that gets over fixed mm -hmm. and in February we could do it all over again okay all right so we want to hear the pants clanking everything falling off the, off the wall that over VIX situation it's like oh my god and then that's usually the time where saner people step in yeah that's that's the time to buy the dip yep okay understood well, and that end of day kind of trend really just seems to be something that's continued to to grow over the the last several years, right? The amount of activity that's taking place into the close. I mean, just the the saddle curve of volume that you see, where so much action, both in equities and in options, is happening in those last ten or fifteen mm -hmm. minutes of the day. And yep. whether it's kind of these market on close orders that are existing and really pushing around the sort of imbalances going into the close, or you know, whether it's the options activity that you're speaking of, right? This like that last 15, 30 minutes of the day, like just really has become increasingly important for trading activity. And it just, we're seeing sharper and sharper moves there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Good. All right. Good one. Good show guys. I like it. Uh, interesting stuff. Something that, you know, some concepts that probably a lot of the, uh, the retail folks don't, don't necessarily know or think about, but it's, it's a nice dynamic to expose to folks. Um, so they can kind of put some pieces together um especially from the options side i think it's interesting stuff right so yeah good good one jason appreciate it all right guys well good to see you um as an fyi mark are you going to be coming to us from france for the whole year maybe 
Maybe we'll see. The uh, we're going international with uh, Tuesday's top thoughts. Oh, I love it. Are you gonna I start? Watch, are you gonna start wearing a beret? <laughs> I have yet to pick one up, but uh, well, I will. think I'll have to have one soon. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Lex.